guys. Let's do this. Praise the name of the Lord. We give God praise and thanks for his goodness and his mercy, his love, and his love towards each and every single one of us. Oh, come on. Let's just take a moment to stand as we give God praise and thanks. We didn't come here to be comfortable. We came here to magnify the name of the Lord. Somebody exalt his name this morning. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. Let everything that had breath give him praise. Give him thanks. Worship his name. For the Lord is good. As we go into this service, we pray that you will go in the comment section and highlight the praise. Hashtag, it's time to worship. We welcome you to Bethel Tabernacle as we worship the name of the Lord this morning. Glory to God. Our call to worship this morning. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in your house. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house, the place where your glory dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Together. Together. O oh, sing, sing unto, unto the Lord, Lord a new song. song. For, For he has, has done marvelous things. Make, make a, a joyful, joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing, sing praises. praises. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Oh, Father, we come to you. We come to you as humbly as we know how, oh God. With bowed heads and humble hearts. Thanking you for this day, oh God, a day we haven't seen. We thank you for new mercies. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. There is none like you, oh God. We thank you that you allowed us to be here in this service one more time, God. There is none like you, Father. We give you honor. We give you glory and praise, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for those who are on their way this morning we pray for the covering of them oh god thank you oh lord for preserving our going out and our coming in lord oh thank you father we give you honor we give you glory and praise lord this day thank you jesus we pray for the, the sick and shut in the homeless the bereaved oh father we lift them up in the name of jesus oh god hallelujah we thank you jesus we thank you lord for your grace and your mercy oh god thank you lord Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, we pray for those who are going or suffering through depression and anxiety, oh Lord. Where the minds have gone astray, oh God. We lift them up in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you, oh God. We pray for the ministry of music and the ministry of song. Continue to use them, oh God. Lift them up in the name of Jesus. Uh, we pray for our elected officials and those in a higher branch in government, oh God. Lift them up. Lift them up, Father. And we pray for the man of the hour, the shepherd of this house, God. We pray that you send a fresh anointing upon him, oh God. Continue to use him as he bring forth the word from on high for the people of God. We continue to use him, Lord. Continue to use him as a vessel, oh God. We lift up his family in the name of Jesus. We pray for lost souls, oh God. We know, Father, that you are the way, the truth, and the life, God. And we even pray for our enemies. 
but the enemy can't have what God has covered, cause he's a master coverer, a burden bearer. We're in a spiritual warfare, but we got to put on the whole arm of God and use our shell of faith, cause we know without faith is impossible to please God. Oh, Father, the Lord is omnipotent. He's all powerful. The Lord is strong and mighty. What a mighty God we serve. He's mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to rescue, and mighty to deliver. Oh, but Father, sometimes the burden and the load gets heavy down here. Oh, Father, we feel like we can never and we can't bear it anymore. But we thank you for divine grace. You give us grace to stand in it, grace to go through it, and a grace to bring us out. Oh, but the posture of God, you're still on the throne. You're still in control. You sit high and you look low and you know all the problems of this world of oh lord but in the midst of everything we know that you abide forever oh thank you jesus oh we thank you for the church the church is mighty the church is triumphant the church is empowered because it stands on a rock for who is jesus he's the lord of lords the king of kings he's master faithful and the bishop of souls but oh father when it's all said and done and the blood is no longer running warm in our veins and we are no longer singing the songs of zion and the hymn books of clothes oh father we got one more river to cross and we pray oh god for a home in glory and this is a servant's prayer and all the believers say amen say amen again hallelujah come on continue to worship him in this place hallelujah 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 jesus 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 hallelujah we exalt your name hallelujah If y'all can stand on your feet and let's give a little hand clap of praise to God because he's been so good. Hallelujah. Let's say, oh, 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 say, oh, 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 Everybody say, oh, 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 how great is our God and oh we'll see how great how great is our God let me see a hand clap of praise put your hands together let me see a hand clap of praise hallelujah yeah. say how A great God, hallelujah, Jesus. Say how great, how great is our God. Is our God. Sing with me, Sing with hallelujah. Me. How great is our God. Is our God. And oh, we'll see. Oh, we'll see yeah. how great.
Will you praise him? Yeah. 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 Say, I lift my hand. I lift my hand. moment to give him praise. God will give you a moment in your moment to give him praise. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord. Say, I praise the Lord. I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, put your hands together and give God praise this morning. Oh, you could do much better than that. Oh, come on, if you're watching us from home, from work, would you go in the comment section and say, I will praise the Lord this morning. I will praise the Lord. I need somebody to testify. Testify with just standing on your feet and say, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time but if you're at home and you're watching us this morning at work would you go in the comment section and say I will testify of his goodness of his mercy of his grace of his love come on let's just take the next 30 seconds and just magnify his name come on let's just worship him and magnify his name 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 for the Lord has been good for the Lord has been good come on somebody lift up your voices say Lord I will bless you Lord I will worship you Lord, I will magnify you. How great. I will magnify you. How great. Lift up his name. Hallelujah. Lift up his name. Hallelujah. Lift up his name. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Oh. Be 
because he's good. Hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together for what the Lord has done for you. Amen. We give God praise and thanks for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. I'm going to ask the sound people, just, y'all just watch me. Hallelujah. Give God praise this morning. It's good to be right back in New York, and it's good to be after going to Christian Education Congress in Delaware. Um, so thank you for those who were able to make it, Reverend Dillon and all the others who came. God bless you so much. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We're on our summer series, so we're moving real fast. Amen. So we give God praise. So good to see you in the house of the Lord one more time. Somebody say one more time. Amen. For those who are about to show up at 12 o'clock, um, they might not see us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. But you made an attempt. Amen. And you get an E for effort. A praise God. For those who are watching online, we are so happy that you took the time to join us. I'm the Reverend Dr. David Allen, the pastor of this wonderful church. And we're happy, happy, real happy that you took the time. Would you please take the time now to share it? But at this time, that, as you're sharing also, would you take the time to list the name of a loved one that we can pray for? Some, we need prayer in these times. Amen. And so nobody said amen. amen. So we need prayer. There's so much happening in this country. But let me get to just a couple of announcements, all leaders, just in case that you're around. Our quarterly meeting, our first quarterly meeting is happening on August 23rd, Tuesday, August 23rd at 8 p.m. Somebody's 8 p.m. And so for those who are able, please let me know. It will still happen. It will still happen. Also, August 27th, Saturday, August 27th, is the Bethel Tabernacle Backpack Giveaway. Everybody said giveaway. giveaway. So we're asking you, for all those who will attend, although make sure you have your Bethel Tabernacle shirts, which you can purchase at a good low price of $25. And so we're asking everybody who's going to attend to get a shirt. One Sunday, we need you to have this because one Sunday is only going to be Bethel Tabernacle shirts on. So we need you to make sure you have your shirts on. So please get your shirts today. Buy one for somebody. Buy one for somebody who you don't know and give it to them. Amen. We need to grow this church. Somebody say grow this church. So please buy, buy, buy. I want to thank two individuals who have really stepped up and really given me such encouragement this week. Brother Tony and Brother Andrew. They were... They were up in here working and working and doing modifications to the sound. And I, I didn't know, Kim, that um, Andrew can sing, which I didn't know this. <laughs> I didn't know this. Andrew was doing soprano, alto, tenor. Andrew was doing his thing. I was like, what? And let me just say this. You'll be shocked who God sends in the midst of you. And I didn't know this until he showed up and he showed us some schematics of what we can do. And next thing you know, he was like, oh, you know what? And he says, um, the only reason I'm here is because Reverend David Allen and Kim got me out of retirement. And I was like, what? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Y'all don't understand. God will supply... God will send the people. If somebody don't want to do it, and that leaves a gap, it only allows God to send somebody else. Amen. So thank you. Thank you, Brother Tony. Brother Tony is multi-skilled, multi-talented, multi, multi, multi. So thank you so much. And there's some additional changes that will come on, but stay tuned. You'll see them as you, we go along. So thank God for it. Amen. Um, thank you. You know, drama, we still welcome you to Bethel Tavern. Put your hands together for her. That's right. She's making it happen. Amen. So we give God praise and thanks. Um, August is right here. And so please, please, um, I would not be taking vacation in the month of August just because we have a number of things that we have to do to get done at this church and a number of things that's happening behind the scenes. Um, so please, please keep me in prayer for those things. Um, they affect Bethel one way or the next. So please, please, I don't, I've learned that if I'm going to be on vacation, I'm going to be on vacation and not pretend to be on vacation and then working. Amen? So it doesn't go well. So I've learned now if I'm not, if I'm going to be working, it's not vacation. 
Amen. So I plan to, there's some big things happening in September, which I'll let you know as I go along for security purposes. I'd rather not say these things publicly, but I'll let you know privately. Amen. And so, what else? That seems to be about it. So it's time to give in the house of the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. Everybody standing with something to give in your hand. Everybody standing with something to give in your hand. Amen. Everybody standing with something to give in your hand. We want to go back to the days of when we used to do the benevolent offering also. So I'm going to encourage you to please, please take out those envelopes and put your benevolent offering on those envelopes. And so please fill out those envelopes. We want to go back to that. Amen. So I say a prayer. Father, we thank you for these your offerings that the people have given back to you. We pray you bless them, sanctify them. We thank you for that they have a heart to give. We pray you bless this church and this community. In the wonderful name of Jesus, somebody say amen. All things come of thee. Come on, no, 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 y'all moving fast. All things come of thee. Let's go. Let's stand. Let's go. be seated in the presence of the Lord just before these singers come. Would you put your hands for Sister Anita Huggins? Now that's what I'm talking about. Now I know part of that was nervousness, but she did that. <laughs> and so thank you for stepping up. Amen. God bless you. That's what we need. People who will step up and not be afraid. I'd rather the people who step up, you can do, I don't care if you do it right or wrong, just step up. Amen. And that counts for a lot of things. Amen. But Reverend Franklin, God bless you. See you in the house. Please don't move. Um, and everybody else, God bless you. Just before these singers come, come on, singers, come on. I just uh, want to say thank you, everybody, as we go. No, I'm going to say that later on. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Truly, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so we honor him this morning and we give him glory. And we bless his name. No, no one in here believes that this morning. Hallelujah. Because oh, you guys are very quiet. Like, I'm just talking Hallelujah. to myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we bless the name of Jesus yes, this morning, right? Hallelujah. We give him glory and honor because All he the is praise. the true king of kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. And every man will bow down and say you a king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Glory, feel this place. Hallelujah. I just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Just want to be with you. King of glory, feel this place. Just want to be with you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to be with you yes the world yes the world will bow down bow down and say you are god and every man will bow down bow down and say you are king so let's start right now so let's start
wanna be with you. I just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. We will sing hallelujah till you come again. Yeah. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. And I will sing hallelujah till you come again. And I'll dance in your presence till you come again. Say sing hallelujah. How many people are gonna sing hallelujah until he comes again? And we'll dance in your presence. Until and let me say this as they're singing that it's not about whether or not we know the song it's a familiar song it's about worshiping the king that's what this is about so we're going to worship unto the father this morning and we're going to bless him hallelujah come on the words are simple this is not a performance this is not an act hallelujah we're going to sing unto the father until he comes again and we'll dance in his presence until you come come on we're going to say that again say we'll sing hallelujah Say King of Glory. So I'm gonna just take a moment and just talk to you guys. Because God has definitely been doing something new inside of me. And I've been in church my entire life. I'm a PK my entire life. And I have to be honest, I didn't get to know him until I was like in my 30s, like for myself. I knew him according to my parents, but didn't know the father for myself. I'm 46. I'm at a place where I don't want to do anything without knowing him. And there are some of you in here who have been in church all your lives as well. We know church. We know how to come in here and, you know, thank you. We bless you. We do all of those kind of things. But we're in a season where if you don't know him for yourself, if you don't know him for yourself, it's not going to be a good thing. There's no more faking, pretending like that's not getting us over like it used to. And so as we stand up here today, we're not standing up here for you guys. We're standing up here because we love God. We serve him. We believe in him because he's brought us through some things. And so I don't know about you guys in here, but I know he's brought me through some things. And so when I have the opportunity to worship him, I have the opportunity to give him glory. I'm going to give that to him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just take a moment and worship him. Let's just take a moment and give him glory simply because he's God. If he never does another thing, he's still God. He's still sovereign. Amen. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We 
give you honor, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Jesus. Help me say, we give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. Come on, you say, we give you glory, Lord. You say, we give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. Say, we give you glory. 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 Say, we give you honor. We give you honor. this atmosphere let's shift it I'm just not looking for just another Sunday I'm just not looking for just another Sunday I'm looking for an experience anybody came for an experience anybody came to be touched by the Lord why don't you open up your mouth and say Lord thank you you've been mighty good to me thank you Lord, we worship you. Thank you. Lord, you've been good to me. Thank you. Lord, I bless your name. Thank you. For being with me in my going out and my coming in. Thank you. For watching over my head. Thank you. For being my healer. Thank you. For being my sustainer. Thank you. Oh, y'all not hearing me this morning for being my provider thank you okay okay i need about five radical people up in here who would just say let me just take the next 30 seconds five radical people who just stand on your feet and let's just do it together and say god we bless you for you've been mighty good for you've been holy for 
for you're the Lord of Lords, for you're the King of Kings, for you're El Shaddai, for you're Elohim, for you're the God who made a way. Is there anybody up in here? I said, thank you. I didn't lose my nerves. Thank you. I woke up this morning. Thank you for getting me here. Thank you for making me walk up here. Thank you for strengthening my body. Thank you. Is there somebody? Come on, put your hands together and say, thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need somebody to testify. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I need you to give me 15 minutes. I'll be done. And as we go to our scripture reading, our scripture reading, we got two scriptures today. One will be from the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to read up to the 9th verse, and then I'm going to cross over to the book of Deuteronomy. Gracious God in heaven, thank you for your word. Sweet Holy Spirit, come in the midst of this place. Shift this atmosphere to the way that you desire it to be. Speak to the hearts and the minds of your people who are watching and those who are present. Father, now, thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everybody, everybody, everybody got to get this scripture this morning. I don't care what devices, Ryan, you too, Reverend Franklin, you too, Domo, you too, everybody, find a scripture, find a scripture, Joshua chapter 1. I don't want you to just, to just hear me say it, I want you to see it for yourself. It says here, I'm reading from the, this version, I like this version today, it's the New King James Version, this one is good, if you stand on your feet, everybody got to get this. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9, and then we're going to cross over to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. Everybody got to hear this. I was preaching this this morning to somebody in my household, so now I'm better at it. Anyways, it says here, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, watch this, the son of Nun, Moses, Assistant. Somebody says Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet will thread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Somebody see that? No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Somebody see that? You all talk back to me. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very what? Courageous. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. That you may what? Prosper. Somebody say that again. That you may prosper. Watch this. Wherever you may go. Somebody see that? So whether you leave New York and go to North Carolina, you shall do what? Prosper. Whether you go upstate, you shall do what? Prosper. It's, it's not exactly where you find yourself, but if you do what God says, you shall do what? No, oh, Y'all got it. You shall prosper. And then watch this. Watch this another word. Because prospering is one, but then you will have what? Good success. Y'all see that? You will have good success. To be prosperous is one thing, but to start something new, you need success with it. Uh, y'all know, ooh. Verse 9 says, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Somebody say, be of good courage. And this is for all the faithful people. Do not be afraid. Turn to somebody and say, don't be afraid to start something new. Nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you 
<laughs> Regardless of wherever you may go. I see, I don't know how y'all read the Bible, but when I read it, stuff like this, I get excited. Okay, watch this now. Watch this. To confirm it, let's go to Deuteronomy verse 8. De Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Everybody there? Deuteronomy verse 8, chapter 8, I'm sorry, verse 1 and 2. Come on, everybody online. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Everybody there now. It says, every command, commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live, everybody say that out loud, that you may live and multiply and go in ooh, and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And watch this word, watch verse, watch, watch verse 2. And you shall remember, remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 46 years like Kim says her age. In the wilderness to humble you, watch this, and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Woo! I want you to turn to somebody and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, today's sermon topic is, don't forget to remind me. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> come on, turn to, come, turn to somebody else and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Please. Oh, say it with some attitude. Please. Don't forget to remind me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Please. Woo. Please don't forget to remind me. The January 6th hearings on what happened in this country just came to an end and they're going to start over again, Reverend Franklin, in September. And, and what they've found so far is that all the people who they've found guilty or took certain pervasive actions on January 6th had brought this country disgrace, shame, and dismay. And one CNN anchor said that there is no way, there is no way that we can ever forget this. And it needs consistent reminding of what this country went through on January 6th. The reason why it needs reminding is because we are not, if we don't, if we're not remembering what happened, we're careful to repeat the mistakes of the past. And we don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past because, watch this, because that president, who was the president, 45 minus 46, who was the president? is looking to be elected again. And now that they're saying, as of Friday evening, they're saying that if elected again, watch this, please, everybody, you got to hear me. We got to educate the church. That if elect again, elected again, that he is about to remove all of the guardrails, the guardrails of your protection, the guardrails of your Medicaid, the guardrails of your security, the guardrails of, watch this, that he is looking that if you were not, watch this, a MAGA fanatic, that wherever you work in government, they're coming for you hmm, and get you out of your position and replace you, watch this, with a MAGA fanatic. Are you all still here? And the CNN, the CNN um, anchor said to everybody, Please don't forget to remind America of what has happened. Are y'all still here? Mm -hmm. I look at this text this morning. Can I just jump to the text? I only have a short amount of time. And here's God. Here is God. Moses is now dead. Watch this. And the author of this text decides 
But he was going to put a small little word. Can I teach for a moment? A small little word in this particular text. It says Moses' assistant. Mm? And the reason why he put Moses' assistant is because he realized that you can't. There are times when you have to learn how to serve as the assistant in order to become the leader. Mm? Mm. And you got to remember what the people, what our forefathers, what our predecessors have done before us. Uh, because if you forget Moses, there is no Joshua. Mm. Uh, I said, listen here, you've got to learn how to be the assistant uh, in order to get where and what God intends for you. And because you don't want to be assistant, you can't get the inheritance. Uh, because watch this, now that Moses is dead, now that the person who you sat under is gone, huh, wait for it somebody, I got, I'm moving real fast this morning, you now not only get the blessings and the inheritance of what God has for you, Deborah, you also get the inheritance and the anointing and the blessing of the predecessor. And, and when you put it together, not only only do you have your blessing huh? and your inheritance of what God gives to you but God gives you what he had for the other person and God said somebody up in here I need you to stand on your feet and say I'm going to get double for the things I have served for and is there somebody up in here who needs to be reminded that God will give me double for what I've been through God will give you double for serving God will give you double but in order for you to have double you got to remember that you didn't get there of your own strength you didn't get there because of your own shoelaces you didn't get there because you think you're so smart and there's some people who's looking for the next election because they think that they got it but if it hadn't been for somebody by the name of Barack Obama who has set the precedent you're not talking back to me I don't care whether you liked him or not but there are some things that they had set in place to make it possible for the next generation you're not talking about me and in order if there wasn't a Moses if there wasn't a Moses who had to consistently remind them, remind them, remind them of what God said, Joshua would not have had the commandment to keep going. You see, you need somebody who have experienced it to say to you, this is what you need to keep doing. Watch this. Uh, in order to uh, get the achievement and what God has for you. And watch this, uh, and a lot of us don't like to be reminded. A lot of us just want to forget. Huh? And but here's, we want to forget about, watch this. The problem is, in the church, we teach forgetfulness. We teach, we teach how to forget what you went through with the old ex. We teach, the, we teach how to forget what the, pa the previous pastor did. We teach to forget what, what, what you went through when you were younger. We teach, we teach how to forget all the bad things. We say just forget about it and move forward. But I came this morning to say there's some things that you just don't want to ever forget. There's some things that you want to keep uh, right in front of you. Am I talking to anybody this morning? <laughs> There's some things you want to keep on the shelf right there. Uh, and because the reason why you keep it there is to remember what God has done for you. Uh, you said I should have been dead, but had it not been for God. Uh, watch this. Uh, I should have been killed, uh, but had it not been for the goodness of God. Uh, that man would have taken me out. Uh, and I'm glad I remember him because uh, there is no way on the heaven am I going to go through that again? Am I talking to any real people up in the air? There's, this, there's, this, there's some people who have got church hurt uh, and you got to remember so when you go to a different church there's some things that you would see that you would say oh no not this time baby but you've got to learn how to say but if it wasn't for the goodness of God uh, I would not have been here you're not talking back to me I don't know why you're so quiet this morning but when I remember when I remember when I remember the goodness of God uh, when I remember that I should have been dead uh, when I remember 
I should have been taken out. Uh, when I remember I didn't have something to eat on my table. Uh, when I remember they took me to court for child support. Uh, when I remember they said they lied about me. Uh, when I remember that they said evil things against me. Uh, when I remember they brought the posse against me. I stood up and I says, uh, I testify and says, uh, somebody please remind me. Uh, because he didn't bring me this far to leave me. And there is nothing that God, uh, there is nothing that God wouldn't do uh, to back me up. Uh, last week, wait for it, wait, wait, wait. Last week I preached about the three attributes of God. I preach about, y'all remember that? I preach about what? I preach about that it's the word. Y'all remember that? And then I preach about it's the plan of God. And I preach about it's the movement of God, the action of God. Y'all still remember that? And when today's word, when today's word, we see the same thing in God. We see God is saying, listen here, I want you, watch this, here comes the first point I'm going to give to you. God says, I want you to have it, but not only I want to bless you, I want you to be able to possess it. Sometimes that God gives you things, God gives you a blessing, but you don't learn how to possess it. God says, enter but you don't know how to enter and possess. But we cry, God, give me, give me, give me, but you don't know how to own it. Ooh, okay. Mm. And you don't know how to own it. And God literally, literally gives you, God gives you the house. God gives you the apartment. Uh, but then you fall back on the mortgage. You fall back on the rental payment. And then you begin to look at the blessing as if it was a curse. Uh, but God says, no, no, no. The reason why you're looking at it as if it was a curse is because you never possessed it in the first place. Don't you know that God always wants to bless you? The problem is possession is stood up to the individual. God says enter, but it's for you to own it. Okay, you're on the mm -hmm. this, this, this. He says, he says, he says this. He says, I'm going to what? Here's the first thing he says to you. You got to learn how to observe. Somebody say observe. observe. You got to learn how to observe. These are my three simple points and I'm done. He says, learn how to observe. Observe and out of observing Mother Chisholm, here comes your testimony. Out of observing, that's why I said all those things before, out of observing, you realize that God has brought you from a mighty long way. Am I talking to somebody? Out of observing, you realize that it was God who brought you from mile A to mile B. Am I talking to somebody? You observe that it's not of your own strength, but it was for God who brought you. He's the first thing in Deuteronomy. He says, I want you to learn how to observe. Everybody got that? The second thing he says, not only do I want you to learn how to observe, but I want you to learn how to recite it, how to meditate upon it. Anybody got that? You've got to learn how to recite it, but you've got to learn how to meditate. Meditation, when you recite something, it becomes a part of who you are. The more you learn how to play my old mentor, Reverend Pastor Lowe, he would say to me, but you've got to learn how to recite something in a specific way. You can recite many things, but recite what works for you. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. In other words, when you get up in the morning, when you get up in the morning, you learn how to say, Lord, I thank you. You learn how to read the scripture. Wait, 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 wait. Here it comes, here it comes. You learn how to say, Blessed is the man who walketh not. Okay, mm -hmm. y'all not helping me this morning. I got to get out of here. Who walketh not uh, in the counsel of of the ungodly. <laughs> You're not ready for this, but you got to learn how to meditate. He says, but the man, this particular man, meditate upon it. When? Both day and night. You've got to learn to make it become a part of you. Mm -hmm. Is there somebody out here? First, uh, first you got to learn how to observe it. Uh, second, you, you got to learn how to do what? Meditate upon it. When you learn how to meditate upon it, it becomes a part of who you are. Not only do you learn how to become a part of who you are when you see trouble. Somebody would say when you see trouble. You don't fear when you see trouble. Because you realize that 
God is with you. Okay, y'all. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying huh? You learn. No, no, no. You don't back down when you see troubles come. You don't back down when you think that you can't pay the mortgage. You don't back down when people walk out of your life. You don't back down when people resign. You don't back down when you get the pink slip. You don't back down when they say they're going to leave you alone. You don't back down when it looks discouraging. You don't back down when you go through the darkness. You said and you look at the word huh? and you said the Lord huh, is with me huh? and you begin to come up all the things that God is wait for it huh? if you're afraid you say the Lord is my refuge huh? if you don't know where to go you say the Lord is my direction huh? if you don't know that you feel encouraged you say the Lord huh, walks with me huh? and he talks with me and he tells me huh, that I am his own huh? if you don't know how you got here huh? you say said to yourself I said it before but he didn't bring me this far to leave me alone am I talking to somebody up in here but here's the last thing I want to say to you when I look at this huh? he says that not only are you supposed huh, to learn how to what live huh? but he wants you to learn how to multiply huh? and the reason why you gotta learn how to multiply is because you get encouraged as you see God is progressing more It's, it's like, let me make it real simple. It's like all of a sudden, I was telling my wife this morning, don't neglect the things that God, be seated real quickly, the things that God puts within your hands. Because he puts it in your hands for a particular reason. Regardless of what it is. If God gives you a job that only pays 25000 he often puts another number in your mind, Ryan. You know you're at 25,000. I'm just doing that. You know you're at 25,000. But in your heart and your mind, just as his word is inside of you, you know you have the capability watch this, watch this, to multiply that 25 to much more. Hmm? God is not going to put something inside of you unless he knows that you're capable to make it multiply. And the reason when I look around and I see people who are sitting under chairs within this church, I don't get discouraged. I don't get discouraged on who comes up to any events. I say, God, if five show up, that means I have the what? The capability to take that five and multiply it five by five. You see, the thing, the problem is, is you're, you're trying to count the way man counts. But when I think about what the word of God says. Am I talking to somebody up in here? The word of God says one day with the Lord is like a thousand years. <laughs> okay, I messed up. I messed up. God, what are you talking about? In my mind, it's 24 hours. And God said, no, no, no. God is saying one day with the Lord mm, is that a thousand years. You see, God, I said, God, you don't know how to count. God says, because uh, you're trying to think like a human. Wait, 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 wait. God, what you mean? He says, you see, you're thinking that eight plus eight is what? Sixteen. Huh? But eight plus eight for God huh? might be eight thousand dollars. You're not talking back to me up in here. Huh? Um, but God deals in the multiplication. I'm about to get out of here. And because God deals with the multiplication of the blessings upon your life, the first thing you got to learn how to do is commit yourself to reading the word of God. Huh? And when you commit yourself to reading the word of God, huh, you'll be reminded of what God can do for you. Huh? Not only you'll be reminded of what God can do for you. Huh? You'll be reminded of where God had took you from. Huh? And not only you'll be reminded of where God huh, has took you from, Ryan, huh? but you'll remember where God, the possibility of where God can take you. Am I talking to anybody up in here? When I read Psalms 1, I'm going to say, because I don't want to mess it up, uh, it says here, wait, 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 it says, blessed is the man who walketh not huh? in the counsel of the ungodly. Huh? Not, uh, I'm about to get out of 
of here. No, stand it. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He don't stand there, but what was, I like the part currently where he says that his leaves, his leaves, his leaves, his leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he do it, it shall prosper. Y'all still didn't get it. It means when I abide in God, when I put my foot in, the Lord becomes my anchor. The Lord becomes my rock. The Lord becomes my stabler. That when I look to him, Moses may have gone on, but because I've served, is there anybody up in here who have served and waiting on your necks? You ought to get in place and say, Lord, I'm waiting on the next. I'm waiting on the multiplication. I'm waiting to enter. I'm waiting because I'm planted by the rivers of waters. I'm planted in the kingdom. I'm planted in the word. And therefore, somebody say, remind me dear Lord, remind me of where you brought me from. Remind me, dear Lord, of what you have done. Remind me, lest I forget. Remind me, it's not of my own, but remind me, remind me. I said, remind me, because you did it remind me you did it for Abraham remind me you did it for Moses remind me you took Joseph out 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 of the well remind me he went to prison remind me that he had a dream and a dream the dream multiplied remind me he went from the prison to the palace remind me but the palace wasn't it remind me you took Esther and the Esther said Esther said Esther said I said Esther said that I am going to see the king and if I perish if I perish is there a somebody up in here that says I'm going all the way all the way with my Lord remind me I made it remind me of his goodness remind me of his love remind me of his grace remind me he made a way remind me he washed me remind me on a friday they hung him high they stretch him wide remind me he went all the way all the way all the way but remind me that early early Sunday morning, he got up with power, power for victory, power to shout yes, power to multiply, power to possess it, power to say you have it, power to say take it, power to break the shackles, power Power, power, power to break governments. Power to say in this election, had it not been for the Lord on my side, where the people of God at, turn to somebody and say, remind me. Everybody standing.
in Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse the three verse third verse all the way down to verse 7 God speaks on the importance of remembering but he also reminds them how critical it is not to forget and the reason why you can't forget it in fact it's not of your own it's because too many times we just believe that we got at this point because we're so smart, but we've always made it, but we've always come through. And little by little, watch this, the thermites eat at your feet. Little by little, the thermites eat at your hope. Little by little, the thermites eat away at you consistently come into the house of God. I'm so encouraged by Sister Anita Huggins this morning for just coming up here. No excuse. No pastor, I can't do it. No pastor, you know what, I don't feel it. But what, what she doesn't know is that she has opened up, as we will say, the portal of blessings. And the portal of blessings, she don't even know who she has blessed. She don't even know who because she served, she served, she served. And when, when you serve, you remember. And as she was praying, I was listening. And she started saying, God, remind them of who you are. I laughed to myself because, say, God will use the simple things. God will use the children. Not us who are so educated. Not us who feel that we have it all. Not, of, not us who come to church school every single Sunday. Never miss a Sunday ever. But the simple ones who just want more of God. And God is saying to each and every single one of us, not only do I want you to enter the land, I want you to possess it. I want you to have it. I want you to have it. Simple word. Don't let people enter your life or don't enter somebody's life. Don't be in relationships that have no essence to it. Have possession. Have ownership. I wish more Bethel lights would get would have ownership in this church. I mean, there would be no empty seats. Imagine you go tell five people about what happens at Bethel in a good way, the good way, not the bad things. Imagine that. You go say, you know what? It's possible. Come to this church. Come get a word. Come sit with me. Come be encouraged. The possibility of what can happen. Don't forget to remind me of what God can do when you make yourself available to him. This message is for somebody who had given up along the way. You've entered people's lives. People have entered your lives. You've entered contracts. You've exit contracts. You've entered new things. You've, you've, you've had jobs. You've entered jobs. You left jobs. You, you get in, out, in, out, in, out. Never possession. Never possessing. Never ownership. And you can all, instead of living, you're dying. You always feel like you're dying. Is that you? You're always like, why am I? You always see the death instead of the life. You always see the decrease instead of the multiplying. The decrease instead of the multiplying. Well, I want to invite you to a God who says, not only do I want to make you live, have life, I want to multiply you. Not only do I want to multiply you, I want you to enter into a place. Not only do I want you to enter in, but I want you to possess it. And that's the God that we serve. I want to invite you to a relationship with the, that God. That you may be in this sanctuary, you may be watching online. That's the God I want to invite you in. To have a relationship with. And just say this simple prayer. Father, I read the word. I heard it preach. I saw me some way in that word. Father, don't forget to remind me. Don't forget to remind me of where you have taken me from. Don't forget to remind me of what you've done. Come into my heart. Save me. Sanctify me. Let my name be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Help me to find a church home 
where I can find encouraging words to get closer to you. Someone who can teach me the word. And I thank you for this. In the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. Don't forget to remind me. <laughs> Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Let's sing. Praise him, all creatures here below. Above ye heavenly host. Don't forget to remind me. Three simple things. He wants you to recall, to look over it. He wants you to enter, but he also wants you to possess. And in those things, they all surround one word. Be ye reminded, the sentence, be reminded that it is God who looks out for you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before his throne. To the only wise God. Be our glory, dominion, honor, and power. Because of that we can now sing. God bless you. God bless you.